In order to calculate the total return on a stock, let's first walk through an example of a no dividend stock. So we're gonna assume that PepsiCo has not paid any dividends over the last five years on their stock. Our return for this situation is total return equals price at time one. So time one will be when we actually sell the stock divided by price at time zero, and time zero is when we purchase the stock minus one. That'll make it into a percentage form. Now to just keep this as simple as possible for the first example, let's say we purchased the stock here in 2018 when the price was 100. So that will be T equals zero. So time equals zero. And then let's say we sold the stock right here in 2021 when um, the price was $150. So that is T equals one. So our total return over that investment would have been uh, 150 divided by 100 minus one, which is just a 50% total return. Now let's make it a little bit more complicated and realistic and assume that this stock actually pays dividends. So we can use the same, uh, you know, time equals zero. So T equals zero, we purchase the stock when its price is equal to 100 right there. And now let's say that we actually sold it right here. So time equals one is gonna be this. And we'll assume that at that time it may not be exact, but we'll say the price was 125 when we actually sold that stock. But let's say also that at the end of 2019, right here, this stock paid a dividend of uh, $10, right? So at the end of every year, PepsiCo pays a $10 dividend. I'm not saying that actually happens, but we'll just roll with it. So then our total return is gonna be what we looked at earlier. So it's gonna be the price at time one divided by the price at time zero. And that's gonna give us what we would actually call the uh, capital gains yield. But now there's another component with the dividend. So with the dividend, we're actually gonna have a whole nother yield included, which is the dividend divided by the initial purchase price of 100. And then we're gonna take this entire thing and we will subtract by one. So our, cap, our uh, capital gains yield would actually have been uh, 25% and our dividend yield is gonna have been 10%, making a total return of 35%.